So wonderful to have the opportunity to speak with you both today. Thank you for your time. Um, I was able to, I, I'm from Toronto, so I was able to see this film um, at the Toronto International Film Festival. Oh, great. Yeah, and it, oh my gosh, what a great reaction to it. So thank you for, for bringing it to the, to the festival. But I have to tell you, um, I literally cried for the whole, the whole time. I could not stop crying. I, I, it, it moved me beyond. And even being Canadian, uh, you know, this, this movie really does affect all of us. And Don, I want to start with you because um, when, when did you know that you wanted to kind of hook up with Pete and then tell the story, you know, he, being the White House, House photographer, but then it kind of grew into something a little bit more. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and thanks again for having us. Um, I was approached by, uh, you know, one of the producers is Laura Dern and she and her producing partner, Jamie uh, Lemons, um, they hooked up with Evan Hayes, who uh, produced the film Free Solo. It was a great, great team. And they were the ones who, you know, brought it to my attention. Jamie was like pretty obsessed with Pete's Instagram um, feed. And then they went to see his shows. And um, I think we all had that crying reaction. So the first time I met Pete was in a conference room in Los Angeles. Um, he brought his laptop and he did his one man show for us, you know, and I felt like, I cried <laughs> in a conference room, you know, and that was just the power of the images and hearing Pete talk. Yeah. And so like all of us felt really strongly that um, Pete's shows were selling out across the country. He has 2.3 million Instagram followers. He's clearly hitting a nerve, yeah. but um, we, we, so we just wanted to do that on steroids. We wanted to honor the pictures, um, but, but also kind of, you know, even more explicitly make the point that we have lost dignity and honor in our White House and that we, we need to get it back. Absolutely, and, and Pete, for you, I was just about to say that because the film really isn't a political film. It, it is about the dignity in the office and what is not happening for the last four years and hopefully not for the next four. Um, but for you to have taken all of these photos, um, they, you know, first off, I wanna ask, why are we all so moved by looking at these pictures, but also they must mean something so entirely different now than what they did when you took them? I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, <laughs> other than, I mean, I think we're looking at them differently just because time has gone by and in comparison what we're seeing today. And it's a sort of a reminder of what a you know normal if you will ethical moral uh respectful dignified compassionate presidency was like mm -hmm. and i th i think people now realize that we so, well some people maybe took it too much for granted um and and being secure that there was somebody in that position uh that we didn't have to worry about every day that we knew uh, he was he was uh, on the job, right? And you know when you see what's happening today, I think people see these pictures in a different light because of that. Yeah, and also what's very interesting too is that um, you had kind of pretty much unprecedented access. I mean, there was like you could you got his family, you got in the White House, you you were there all the time. I don't even know when you got to sleep, but you know that's another story. But I but truly. When you look at what we see now, the pictures are very orchestrated. We only get to see certain things from the White House now. I find that very interesting. Well, it's a, re it's a reality show presidency. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I mean, I was kind of struck by the picture the other day of him supposedly mm -hmm. on a conference call working at Walter Reed. And it's a picture of him at a conference room table staring at the camera. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's truly unbelievable. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Don, how difficult was it for you to you know sit down with Pete? Millions and millions of pictures, I'm sure, to go through. How do you 
how do you diversify? How do you know what to choose, what you wanted to show? This this movie could have been 18 hours long. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know what? I would have preferred, I would have liked that. I would have had a problem with it's a that. Broadway show, right? Exactly. Maybe beat your head into Broadway, maybe. Um, <laughs> you and Bruce. Um, you know, we um, were what we did is we we chose themes that we wanted to focus on. And so we had a great junior editor, Ben Zweig, and he had every book Pete had written and also President Obama's biography. Mm -hmm. um, he also read books about Reagan. Like we all kind of were just reading about the office of the president um, and then chose kind of empathy, you know, crisis, family, chose a number of different things and then selected images from there. So, you know, we definitely went through thousands of images. We did not go through millions, but we went through thousands yeah. um, and kind of got it down to about 2000 <laughs> photos that we were kept coming back to. Um, and then um, kind of started to cut the film and uh, based on, you know, so we, our initial shoots were of Pete speaking with people and doing his show. And then we started to pull out like kind of what would become the spine of the, the film um, and then slotting the pictures in. So what we ended up with were about 650 pictures in the, in the movie. Um, once we got kind of like on the page, you know, like where we were like pretty close, um, then we brought Pete in to say like, you know, here's photos we're thinking about. And he had, you know, suggestions about, you might like this one better, or this one might speak to that more. Yeah. Pete has a really insane memory and can like, you know, people always ask like how he does the Instagram so quickly, like he can really pretty quickly do, 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 get to an image. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty fun to watch. I mean, we're all avid you know, Susa Instagram followers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I am as well. And and Pina, yeah, I wanted to ask you for a guy who started his career, you know, obviously your whole career has been behind the lens. What's it like being this Instagram star or going out there and talking to people? And I'm sure this is something that you never anticipated that would be in your life. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been an evolution, I guess, of sorts. Um, I, I mean, I have gotten to the point where I'm comfortable making, a, you know, a presentation in front of an audience. I mean, I was telling some friends of mine not long ago that if you, it, it, 20 years ago, I couldn't have spoken in front of an audience. I just couldn't have done it. And when I tried to do it, I was terrible. But somewhere along the line, I've gotten uh, the I've, I've, I've just gotten the ability to be able to um, connect with an audience. Uh, the film is, you know, t taking it to a different level in terms of giving up some anonymity. But, you know, I felt I was in good hands with, uh, with this team that made the film. Yeah, I want to ask you about the trust factor because, uh, like I say, Don, you did a, a wonderful job with it, and and the team obviously it's not just something you do by yourself. Uh, but Pete, you know, how do you, how do you know when you can trust somebody with this beloved work? I mean, every picture is your baby. Let's put it that way, you know. Well, I mean, for me, it started the, the fact that Laura Dern was involved in the project. Um, you know, I, I've always thought really highly of her as as an actor and just as a human being yeah. and um and so I was approached by her and her production partner Jamie Lemons and then Evan Hayes had just done Free Solo right and so that was sort of the the initiation uh uh in terms of the, the, when when they first started talking to me about doing this project yeah, and w w were you nervous at all about it or you just kind of let it go? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, because like I knew it would mean, um, you know, revealing some some things about, you know, my private life that I've always protected. Sure. And, um, uh, you know, I'm not looking to be, you know, a quote unquote celebrity or something like that. But I did think it was valuable to, to tell this story in a medium like like film. Yeah, Don, uh, 
you know, like I, I said, uh, it, it's just such a brilliant, brilliantly made film and, and it's so just, oh God, captivating. I, I watched it a few times actually, because I, you, you miss some of the pictures, you know, you want to go back yeah. and, and look at them and they say, you know, picture tells a thousand words. Yeah, this tells a, a million words. At the end of the day, what are you hoping that audiences will take from it? And, and I'm glad that it is being, you know, or has been released before your election. Yeah, you know, um, that was really the thing that Pete asked of us is that we, you know, release it before the election, that we remind voters of what authenticity, empathy, intelligence, and hard work <laughs> was like. Um, I, you know, we have just, this country has been devastated by the pandemic, by racial divisions, by so many challenges. And um, there was a time not too long ago when it did feel like uh, we were a tolerant place, yeah, not an intolerant place, a place that the world could hold up as a, mo as a model. And uh, not, I'm not an American exceptionalist. I think, you know, many, many countries have contributed to a world uh, that is more positive, but I, I hope that America returns to a place where we are contributing to the world, uh, to making the world a positive place. And government matters. You know, Alice Gabriner is one of Pete's deputies. Um, it totally matters who's in the White House. Like leader, leadership matters. This, this country does not run itself. So I hope people take that, um, you know, kind of message seriously. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think one of my biggest fears is people believe this is normal, what we're experiencing with the Trump presidency, that all politicians lie or, you know, whatever it is, that's not the case. Yeah. And, and just seeing, um, you know, a recent example of that, I hope people will want to return to that feeling. You know, I, I literally remember feeling like, you know, oh, there's this issue or that issue with President Obama, he's got it. Like, <laughs> they'll figure it out, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and I want to feel like that again. Like, yeah. I have other things to do. I, absolutely. <laughs> and, and just lastly, Pete, for you, are you going to ramp up the Instagram? You know, like, I really, it, it's so important. The, the amount of followers that you have and that it, it, it's beyond amazing and what you're doing. Well, I mean, hopefully I will be able to ramp down to Instagram next January 20th. I hope so too. Yeah. That, that's my, that's my goal. Yeah. But uh, it's been, it's, listen, thank you so much to both of you for your time today. Thank you for this film. It's wonderful. Um, and um, just, just best of luck to both of you. And uh, maybe we'll get you here in Toronto when this is all over and we can all talk in person sometime soon. I appreciate your time. Yeah, as soon as they let us into Canada again. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. for now, it's okay, but we'll, we'll get you back here, I promise. Thank you so much, you guys. Right. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.